Yes, look, I finally have some lighting happening on my Orion. And that's what this video will be about. I've actually got um, lights are there in the, uh, the cockpit. The cabin is all lit up. Can't see anything in there, I've done some tricks. There is some blue lighting here, you can kind of see it at the back here. I've got a bit of a bleed line there still to fix. But it is coming along. We have motors that are blue. We have cabin that's all lit up. And, um, and I have got that cockpit. And there's these little landing lights down here as well. Um, they, they do light as well. They're harder to see. But they do. Anyhow, uh, so would you like to see how I've lit my Orion? Yeah? Okay. Stand by. It'll be straight after the opener. Roll the music. This is where I left the model last time and we had put together the white plastic parts but there were a lot of sinkholes and there was a bad fit on the fuselage halves. There was quite a lot of surgery that was going to be needed to get this thing into the shape that it needed to be. So I started doing that by adding CA glue and that was a good way to fill some really bad joints because it's quite a trough. I masked out all the areas I didn't want the glue to accidentally fall on and then I had the big job of sanding that all back. CA glue is a bugger the sand but it certainly did the job of fixing most of those problems then I set about rescribing my panel lines and also adding some more I found a diagram online of probably how the ship might be and I added lots and lots of panel lines to make it much more interesting and I also added those little nostrils at the front there just um, behind the uh, cockpit now the lighting I only had a blue LED and a strip of three cream LEDs but I managed to put those together and run them off a little battery that I had as part of a tester kit that came with the lighting for my um, my cabinet. Um, the, the lighting went inside my display cabinet. And that all worked. I thought, well, there you go. I've got a quick solution. That'll do. But there were a lot of bleed problems and there were a lot of little edges that needed doing. I ended up re-puttying and up re-sanding and repainting. And then I even scribed a few more panel lines. There was just so much work till I eventually got the whole thing blanked out so that I didn't have any light bleed and I had a nice panel line sort of look all over. Now these little windows that go inside the clear parts, they don't fit. The middle window on the fuselage is a square, but the middle window on the clear plastic part is a rectangle. So there was quite a bit of surgery involved to fix that. And I added a little diffuser box there, and the diffuser box is just a little plastic box that the light shines through, the little LEDs, to give a much more even illumination, but it also provided a blanking plate to hide the interior that I wasn't going to build. But I'll talk more about that later. I also changed the mounting point for the stand, and I'll tell you more about that later as well. But there you go, that's how she looks. I painted a little bit of Tamiya orange, clear, behind the um, cockpit window to give that uh, a different look and that's pretty well close to how it is in the movie. So this is where I am with the um, with the lighting and it's, it's getting there. I've got a bit of work to do still. The, um, the blue lights are working and the motors back here but they um, I think my battery's running a bit flat at the moment. They do pulse. Well, you can probably see a little bit of strobe there. Actually they normally do pulse. But I said I think I'll warm my battery out. The um, side windows light up nicely, especially with that box, but they're pulsing now too. So I'm getting some sort of feedback from the, the LED in the rear, because normally my lights don't pulse like that. Uh, they only pulse at the back with the blue one, because everything's in parallel. And the um, cabin, which has got a big glow. There's also a little mark there in the cabin, I don't know what that is. I'll have to find out if that's on the inside. I'll get in there and scrape that out. But um, Normally it all glows and lights up beautifully, but as I said, I have been running the battery a lot and I will have to replace that. So I may be better off having this running off 240 if I want to have it lit for a long period of time. Who knows? All right, let me pull this apart now so I can show you inside how I made all this happen. The spaceship is now on a stand, which I've made, which is um, it's just a little craft board base and I put one of these little tubes in. I don't know where they come from. The Becker gave them to me and they are terrific because um, they're really good if you're doing aircraft in flight because you get a myriad of angles because they're tilted over a bit so you can have all these different angles. Now, to get that in there, I had to actually make a round hole further back. Now this here is actually where the slot was 
for the uh, flight stand that came with, which was totally hopeless. It was so loose and wobbly, it just kept falling off. So um, I ended up figuring out the centre of gravity, and you know, doing the old trick where you just put your finger underneath and see where it balances, right? So you do this sort of trick, see where it balances, and wherever it balances. Because once the battery was in, obviously the centre of gravity and the whole weight of the thing was quite a lot. Now the, um, the back here is just being run by one tiny little blue light, which is hardly doing anything because my battery is basically... Well, actually, no, my wires have snapped. Oh, there we go. You might notice it pulses. That's what it's supposed to do. And it's usually quite bright. Now, the um, nothing is fixed on completely here. Wings come off. And this whole section here comes off. And inside that, I've made this little blanking plate. Now, this... Well, actually, it's a diffuser box is what I've made. Now what had happened is, inside here, I'm using just one LED strip. It was actually left over from lighting up my display cabinet. It came with these big long LED strips, but you can cut them up. And the smaller section you cut them into is with three little LEDs. So this will probably burn the whole screen out, but if I now light that, put power to it, right? you can see one, two, and the third one is under here. And the third one comes right up, and that's what's lighting my cabin. So actually that's not flickering now, so maybe my wire was just loose. So I only had it temporarily attached for the video. Because what I will do is, the, these are where my wire is coming out, and I've got a switch. And I'm going to run that down to the base, and basically have it so it's it's inside. And then I'm going to paint both my base and that tube. All right, so all of this is going to be black. At the moment it's rather tricky because that's see-through that kind of hides on the black screen there. But, um, yeah, now the um, the windows here give some diffusion, but unfortunately, let's see if I can get this thing to work. You can see inside, and you can see that there's, well, it, it wasn't evenly lit, and there were a number of problems. Because basically, you've only got, you see it in the glass, you've only got lighting on one side and one side. All right, so the front windows and the back windows would light. So what the diffuser box does is diffuser box one it was hiding the battery and a few other things which were showing originally now I've shoved the battery further back but the diffuser box basically makes all the windows light up. I don't know if you can see but it does, it does, believe me. Because um, the, the idea behind a diffuser box is you light you light inside that, the LEDs inside that, right? As you really do, and it's inside this little box that I made. And the box is designed to light up and shine. This is only very thin plastic. So the LED lights the box and that pushes a bit of light out. And it also works as a blanking plate because inside here, if you look in, all you'll see is the diffuser box. So that saved me having to build an interior for things that might be seen through there. And the diffuser box also helped push light forward. Uh, because basically it's reflecting a bouncing light around, so it's helping bring light forward to get to the cabin. Not the cabin, the, um, the cockpit, right? So the cockpit would light up. And to get light down into the, um, the landing lights here, well, what I did was I, um, I drilled holes in here. I can actually pull that out. Yeah, that's just stuck in. You'll see what I've done is I've drilled holes all through there. So any light coming in from that third LED, which is hidden down in there, right? deep down inside there, you'll find that third LED. Maybe I'll light things up. There we go. See, there's the third LED. And that LED is actually backlighting through those holes into my landing light strip. Now, I haven't painted this part at all, and I really can't get clear information about it. And Let's face it, this is science fiction, it's fantasy, so, you know, <laughs> you can basically have quite a little license, artistic license, do what you want. Unless I was building it exactly to the photos that you can find, or the, the small bit of video. There's only like about 15 seconds worth of video of this ship in the movie. I mean, there's the whole of the Blue Danube plays, but you don't clearly see the ship very often. Most of the time there's bits and there's a spaceship and Floyd being, you know, basically talked to by the hostie inside and the cabin with the, um, or the cockpit with the pilots. But actual exteriors of the ship that are clear amount to a whole 
15 seconds tops. So we really don't get a lot of information. So uh, by leaving that totally clear, I've actually got that whole thing as a reflective surface and it basically said takes light from the inside there. So that works. That's my solution. Now look, I'm no expert in lighting. Absolutely. Well, in lighting models. Let's just qualify that. I've had quite an extensive career in doing stage lighting and theatre lighting and doing special effects. And so I've sort of got a vague idea. Well, I've actually got quite a good idea. How light works and the tricks you can do with it. So the idea of using a diffuser box, that's something we do. That's stage work. Sometimes you want to get a light to a certain spot. You might make a diffuser box and actually push a light inside an object or something to make it diffuse and light up. So that's an old trick that I knew. So that's why I came up with that idea of using the diffuser box, which allowed me to use a couple of pinpoint lights, but spread the light wide over a whole area. That's a trick. It's not a lot of trick. Now, while we're having a look at the, um, the body here, and I've got this kind of low light situation, you see all the panel lights. Most of those weren't there. In fact, that wasn't there. That's a little plate that I put on. And if you'd watch one of the early videos, that's the ventilation for the toilets. Yes, that's where all the poo smell comes out. That's right. <laughs> and um, I had to clean up a whole lot of basically sink marks there and rescribe those panel lines and um, kind of carried away and did a bit too much scribing. But I'm hoping I can hide all that with paint. But I... Um, yeah, there's a lot of scribing went into there. But I added lots of panel lines. I can't even remember this. Panel lines added everywhere. And I gouged them out quite a lot to um, to fill the sort of empty spaces. There's also all the filler in there. Because remember, there was a horrible big panel line gap here. or It was basically a trough. It was a bad panel line join. So I've done a lot of work there. I, I made the nostrils. <laughs> These two little... Um, gouge out marks here they're they're seen pretty well on the um, the one in the movie and pretty well all the other models have been made after this one and of course I did all the work as seen in the previous video to um, to create the little plate here and shape up the um, cabin or cabin cockpit area keep calling it well it's part of the cabin and I also scribed quite a few more I've done a lot of scribing but basically only on the top here and the sides um, a lot of things were really good, like this door here and what have you. They were all quite good. So I really only needed to work on a few panels on the top here. And um, they'll, it's not going to be great, by the way. <laughs> Sorry. It's not going to be great. I will be painting this the, the creamy ivory colour, but I will use the grey as a base. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how I paint out lots of panels, different weird colours. So when we do put the ivory colour over the top, end up with all these panel line effects or panel effects yeah it should be quite tricky I did add um, some panel lines here because this was um, this was really bad very bad join and I still have a bit of blanking to do here and um, a bit of work to do to figure out how to get my motors looking better now I could invest in another one of these little blue LEDs that might be an idea and then because I've got two well, dare I say it, bum holes. Do you realise saying bum hole in a post on Facebook can get you banned? Bum hole. Let me say it again. Bum hole. It's a word. It's a real thing. We all have bums and they have holes in them. This one has two bum holes. I don't know why they got me banned. I don't know. Some people are just ridiculous. But the motor. Let me find the motor here for you. Here's my little motor, right? It's my little rocket motor. I, um, it was pretty hard to settle on a colour scheme because basically, who knows? But there was a lot of, looked at a lot of photos and drawings and things and I ended up going, well look, there's a lot of orange happening and there's a lot of this gunmetal and silver and can I use a bit of gold? I'll just use those and see how I go. So that's how I painted my motor and it's fanciful and it's not realistic. Now I'd hope to put the LED inside here because those little trumpets there, they match up with the bum holes. And it's but, yes, I could do that. I'm going to have to drill a hole in there. I'll probably have to feed two of those blue lamps in, one on either side. That is all doable. And this thing is an absolute bugger to stuff inside. I'll try and attempt to do it, but it, it really likes going in. It's going to make a lot of me. No, no, it's always, it's always a bit fiddly. That's in. Yes, it's in. <laughs> yeah. 
It's like a child. They'll, they'll, they'll be, you know, obstinate and useless. And then as soon as you've got someone watching, you say, look, they never do this. It doesn't. Anyway, look, once it's in there, you'll never see anything. And it really is, to my way of thinking, quite a waste. And anyway, I would have to attach it. It would need to be attached to the back here. So I'd have to go on there. Um, because the lighting wires will have to go through it. And... In the end, look, I've made a decision. That's pretty, and I'll, I'll keep that, and I'll, I'll have it, and I'll take photographs of it, but it's not going to go into my build. Because maybe I'll get a second one of these. Maybe I'll get a slightly bigger battery that might have a little more oomph. And, um, and then I can shove one in each of these bum holes. Yes. <laughs> All right, more of that later. Anyhow, that's where I'm up to. That That's it. Uh, there's probably... Somewhere here there was a big... I don't even know where it is now. Well, I've done such a good job I can't see it. There was some horrible sinkholes in the wings. But I have um, filled those, sanded them and repainted them. And my filling trick of um, using the CA glue, which is kind of handy to get really hard and um, solid and, and something that's binding really well. That's good, but it's a hell of a thing to sand. <laughs> it's always in sand. Um, so then I, as I showed in the photographs at the beginning, once I sort of got that roughly down to what I needed, I still found I needed to come back with something and I used Mr. Surfacer until I finally got the um, shape of one. But look, that's that, that's that, that's that. Look, it's all coming together. It's all coming together. So that's probably it for this video. So I hope you found that all interesting. Um, as I say, it is my first lighting job on a model. Um, I have lit other things, much bigger things in my time but never a scale model. So that's where I've got to. If you know some tricks that I don't, you probably do, let me know. All right? So like, subscribe, comment, be nice about it, and I'll hopefully see you in the next video. So it's goodbye from Australia, and it's hooroo from Harry Houdini.